You can't go after Joe Biden if the money trail leads to Joe Biden. You have to look the other way. The media, as I mentioned, has been accused of covering for not only Hunter Biden, but for Biden. Get the key witnesses, get them in public, make it so that the media cannot ignore this story. Well, it's no secret that the mainstream media's coverage of politics has been a team sport for many years now. But yesterday, one team was forced to cross over and cover the other. We're talking about the Hunter Biden court appearance, a very serious matter long ignored by a large segment of the American media. But once the video came in of Mr. Biden walking into court surrounded by lawyers and tight security, and once a judge ruled that Mr. Biden's plea deal did not work for her as written, all media jumped in to cover it. It was a tough day for Hunter Biden, and according to those in the courtroom, he expressed his disappointment with what, with what was going on openly. TBN's own governor, Mike Huckabee, has had a keen eye on the media and politics in his very successful public career, and we welcome him now. Governor Huckabee, good to see you this evening. Well, great to be with you, and uh, boy, what a day it was uh, in the courtroom in Delaware this week. It's just a, a big shock, and it's changed everything. It has changed everything. That's what I want to talk to you about, because the media, as I mentioned, has been accused of covering for not only Hunter Biden, but for Biden. Yesterday, they were forced to cover this in what was a shock to many people. Many thought that he would, Hunter would go into the courtroom, walk out with his plea deal, and that would be that. But that's not what we saw yesterday. This judge, as I mentioned, uh, didn't accept it, and so Hunter Biden pleaded not guilty. But how does this change things, the fact that the media is covering it? How does that change things for the American public? They're finally going to start learning some facts about this uh, whole scandal that they've totally been oblivious to because the mainstream media has absolutely ignored every aspect of it. But here's what I think is going to happen, and I would give some caution to my Republican friends. Don't rush to an impeachment over Joe Biden. Don't get ahead of anything. Take this slowly. Let the facts begin to dribble out, and they will, and it'll come from the courtroom, just like it did yesterday. It'll come from congressional inquiries, as they're planning. But don't rush to an impeachment, and here's why. Because there's going to be a body of evidence that will be so overwhelming that at some point there's not going to be an option, not only for the media, but for Democrats, to just say, oh, there's nothing to see here. There's lots to see here. And the more that the public is aware of it, the more that the media and the Democrats, of course, I repeat myself, the more they're going to have to acknowledge it and confront it. So you think that some of these congressional Democrats that we have seen, because we saw Speaker McCarthy say that they may look into an impeachment inquiry, we saw that just this week, that they should be measured with how they talk about this and how they approach this? Absolutely, Lindsay. I think their big mistake would be to rush and put an article of indictment on the table. Don't do that right now. You've got plenty of time, and quite frankly, what's important is to make sure that the facts are incontrovertible. And the only way to do that is to get the key witnesses, get them in public, make it so that the media cannot ignore this story. And when it becomes just overwhelming with evidence, then even Democrats in Congress are going to finally say, we can't keep pretending that there's nothing here. That's when the tide turns. I remember the same thing happened during Watergate. Once Republicans started calling for the resignation or the impeachment of Richard Nixon, it was over. And that's what will, I think, eventually happen in this uh, scandal involving not just Hunter Biden. It's not about him. It's about his dad, the big guy. There's a good likelihood that we could have the two frontrunners, Joe Biden and former President Trump, be two candidates who have both been impeached going into 2024. I mean, ultimately, for the American people, is this what America has come to? This is what we're putting up to be the next president of the United States? I say it would certainly be historic, uh, but then people can decide who do they think should have been impeached and who shouldn't, and the voters will ultimately make that decision. But we're still so far away, we don't know who's going to end up being the nominee of either party. Uh, do both of them survive all of the legal challenges and difficulties they each have? We just don't know. So I would say uh, pop some popcorn, put your feet up, 
It's going to be a good show. Well, joining us now is Seamus Bruner, Director of Research at the Government Accountability Institute. You know, I think one of the interesting things we saw today from these court hearings is this judge ultimately saying that this was a sweetheart deal. She said that it was unusual, as I mentioned. It wasn't normal. So many people have thought that the DOJ was slow walking some of these things to protect Biden, ultimately, not just Hunter, but to protect Biden. So how much more does it lead us to believe that that may be true? Yeah, I mean, it was it was preposterous from day one that the U.S. Attorney's Office and, and, and Leslie Wolf, the deputy there under David Weiss, said that you can't go after Joe Biden if the money trail leads to Joe Biden. You have to look the other way. Uh, I believe there was some tipping off of various search warrants of a storage unit. Um, so when the judge saw this plea agreement, she was, I mean, stunned as anybody would be because it essentially said that Hunter will not be charged. So what, so what happened is a few weeks ago when we first learned about this plea agreement, Team Hunter Biden, his legal team came out and said, okay, case closed, Hunter's gonna plead guilty to some misdemeanors, no jail time. And so, you know, this is, everybody move along. And then the prosecution said, well, actually there's some matters that are still under investigation. So there was this kind of disconnect between the two. When the judge sees that, she says, well, is Hunter immune from any future charges or not? And they had different answers. The prosecution says no, because you can't have future immunity like that. And team Hunter Biden says, yes, he is immune. So that's what she's, she's blown up that deal where Hunter gets a get out of jail free card. Okay, so all this has a lot of interesting timing as well, because we expect next week for Hunter's friend and business partner, Devin Archer, to testify privately before Congress. Many people think that he will say that he was actually in the room with Hunter when, at the time, Vice President Joe Biden was on speakerphone with these foreign entities talking about foreign deals, something he said, Joe Biden said, he never even talked to Hunter about business deals. So that would go against that. But as you mentioned, it would be an impeachable offense. What does this actually give Republicans in the House the nugget of information that they need to prove that Biden was involved? Is that enough? Um, to, to have Devin Archer, I mean, the, Devin Archer is like a brother to Hunter Biden. He has been with the Bidens since day one. He's a, the one part of the Rosemont Seneca partnership that is through which all of these Burisma and Chinese money deals flowed. Um, Devin Archer is the guy who's in a suit and tie and sharp while Hunter is, uh, can't be found because he's on a bender. And Devin Archer goes into the deal. So Devin Archer is in every room where each deal happened. He knows Joe Biden very well. He met with Joe Biden while they were working for Burisma. He's basically the perfect witness. Now, we're not positive what he's going to say. Um, and he has a lot of reason not to spill all of the beans because he was up to his neck in these deals. But nonetheless, if, he, if he's the third person to name Joe Biden as the big guy, that's, that's uh, irrefutable proof that Joe Biden was involved. And of course, we've got so much other evidence that Joe Biden was involved. I mean, we've got voice messages of Joe Biden telling Hunter he's in the clear. Uh, we've got messages saying, I, you know, I've talked to my father about this. So, I mean, I don't know that we're missing very much, Lindsay, other than, you know, Congress to uh, move forward. Wow. Well, we'll be paying attention next week to see what happens with that hearing. Seamus Bruner, it's good to see you this evening.